Hey guys, this is KSP with Ape, and today you've joined me for episode 5 of KSP, Road to Colonization, and we start right where we left off, on the moon with the Thor 1 lander, taking some gravioli scans of various places on the surface. Now you may remember last time I mentioned I forgot to fill up the extra tanks on the lander, because I rarely do, because for most missions you don't need to, but if you're jumping around the surface, you really do. So we won't actually be able to complete the mission today, but we will be able to get another one of these, um another one of these reports. We've taken one already, so that'll be half done, which means this mission will probably not actually be profitable, but hey, you know, missions are missions. We get money. Um, I'm not sure how much it pays, actually. It probably will be, because we just have to pay for the fuel, right? And the rockets are reusable, so who knows? Anyway, we land on the slope, we get the um, scientific report, and then we just leave. Um, I have to leave kind of now, because I was sort of sliding down a slope, which is not great, because I'm in a pretty suboptimal position. Um, but I don't have a ton of fuel, so I didn't want to rep reposition myself. I have more than enough fuel to get back to Kerbin, but the problem is getting into the orbit of the moon, which I think I actually do have enough fuel for. I probably could have completed this mission if I'd have been really smart and really brave, but I am neither. So, we'll come back and do it another day. Um, which is fine, maybe we'll um, bring some extra fuel in, the, put it in the moon, into the moon sp station so that we can drop off. Um, at the moon base as well, because I want to go back to the moon base, because we have many a thing to do at the moon base, like science and having a base on the moon. Although we currently have a Duna base, so the moon base is kind of like old news. No one really cares. Anyway, after a bunch of warping and getting my um, my uh, intersects um, stuck in, we uh, arrive at the... Well, apparently it's called Thor 1, but it's actually just the fuel tank. Names get all messed around in KSB and things. But anyway, um, after a bit more maneuvering in, here we are docking to the fuel tank. And then we will head on back to the station, back to Kerbin, and then we will do the main part of today's episode, which is a lot of Duna stuff, because things are happening on Duna, and we need to we need to fix them, need to make them happen. Anyway, I do a bit of a quick quick load, because I couldn't put down a, um, uh, couldn't put down a maneuver node. I also just uh, checked the mission thing up there. I didn't realize it had flagged up. But yeah, I did get like 20 grand for doing this um, because you get money each time you get a get a gravioli scan. But yeah, anyway, fairly standard maneuver. We do have enough fuel to get back. My fears are laid. We fire up the engines and start heading back to Kerbin. Interesting thing I found out after last episode from your comments is you don't actually need waste tanks because I was worried on Duna and um, we were running out of so, um, room to store waste for the life support mod, but apparently you don't actually need them. Apparently you can just, it'll just dump the waste. So I've actually been overbuilding all of my spacecraft. It's just something that popped into my mind then. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, kind of annoying. I feel like I've been sort of screwing myself a little bit. It's useful to have the waste tanks because then you can repurpose it and um, fire up, you know, generators like oxygen you know, things that repurpose the waste and make make oxygen good again i don't know you know like um carbon scrubbers god how can i not think of that? <laughs> things that repurpose the waste and make oxygen good again yeah that's the technical term but you'll probably know them as carbon scrubbers because you you don't even know about space um <laughs> yeah anyway here we are arriving at periapsis getting our um well, just getting our velocity down. We usually do these in two burns because this isn't a particularly powerful spacecraft. Its engine is fairly low thrust and uh, has a pretty heavy fuel tank on its nose. But it looks like we're getting a good intersect. There we go. We should arrive pretty soon. Well, we should arrive on the other side of the orbit quite nicely. We'll do a quick retrograde burn just to bring it in a little bit, get a little closer and hopefully not miss. And then... Um, yeah, then we'll go back around, do the second burn, hopefully arrive at the station. This one actually doesn't go perfectly, so I actually have to do another orbit to get around because I burn too late, as you can see here, I wait too long uh, to fire up the engine, and I'm just going to fly right past the station, and that happens, and blah, 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 we go and dock anyway. Um, I've, I've done a lot of these dockings, I'm tired of watching them because of all the road to exploration, um, but, and I think I've already put one in from a future episode in Road to Colonization, but it's fairly laborious, and we have some pretty cool stuff to get to, so I thought I'd just cut that out until we arrive at the station. The station looking slightly nicer than it did last episode, now that I've moved to that um, workshop, but I still want to move a few more things around. Uh, I'm not sure. You know, I yeah, stations it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what I want to do, but I, I think it's looking all right now. And there's more, more, more space to dock to because there's no thing in the way, so that's quite good. Anyway, 
We have to put our Kerbals into the various places, the scientist in the research station so that we get into the science lab so that we can get some research done. Gonna add a little more data so we get, you know, even more science. Because we, we need science, that's our main goal right now. We need to get about a thousand science so we can unlock the narrowband scanner which will allow us, allow us to more easily detect ore on the surface. And yeah, and part of that is the Duna mission, which we're currently doing now. We're we're on Ike, and we're actually just leaving Ike, because it's getting dark, and we don't want to run out of electric charge. Um, but you may remember last episode, we came to Ike, grabbed some science, threw down a flag for fun and profit, and then, uh, yeah, but now it's time to leave, because we actually need this lander. There's a problem on the Duna base, a severe problem we must solve, which will require us to drop down to the surface um, with some extra solar panels, which I'll explain a little more. But right now, um, we're just going to get ourselves our encounter with the Concordia, the uh, spacecraft, the mother spacecraft of all of this, which will be returning to Kerbin at some point with hopefully a full crew, um, and then we'll come back probably at some point. It may also go to Eve, the Concordia, um, because why not? It, it, it can. It, obviously, in that we probably wouldn't land on EVE with it. Um, I am going to send another probe to EVE probably next episode to try landing um, and returning to orbit um, because it's pretty hard to get off of EVE. You know, it's got a pretty thick at atmosphere, it's got a lot of gravity. So we're going to send a probe to try and do that first because I've never actually done it. So we're going to do that and then maybe we'll send a manned mission to the surface of EVE because I really want to do that. I've never done it. I feel like I should, you know... Oh, I'm, I've been playing KSP a long time, and I've never even returned from the surface of EVE. What am I even doing? Anyway, and we've got our encounter, um, so that we will arrive at the Concordia, and then dock, and then have to go off right away. But we have some things we need to do. We need to start processing the science. I forgot to start processing the science from last uh, from my last Ike mission. So we have two loads of science in this spacecraft. Um, so we have a lot to transmit back and put in the science lab and sometimes just keep. Um, I fly right past the Concordia, which was even more worrying at four times time accelerate. Um, I buzz right past it, almost tear it to bits. That'd be pretty terrible if I destroyed the mothership, which was very expensive and would strand the crew here, which I think would be fine. I think we have enough life support that even if the Duna crew were stranded, um, they'd be fine. These guys probably would have died in the crash, though, so, I mean, you know, it, it swings and roundabouts. Anyway, um, we're going to go and dock, hopefully not crash and destroy everything, because it's quite a nice little compact spacecraft. I'm a big fan of it. I don't want to destroy it. And you can see how slowly I would like to dock. This is four times time accelerate, and it's taking forever, because I just love the slow, just moving in really, really slowly, um, because it's just so, so, so beautiful to watch, so serene, especially around another planet. Um, but anyway, it looks like we're docked on, and we're gonna grab that science. Uh, we got all the science, just checking the materials bay, nothing in there. And we're gonna go put it in the crew capsule. Annoying, they have to dump some of the experiments because, um, we already have them, which is fine, we already have them. So what I'm gonna do is look through them a bit. Um, apparently I can't put them in the science lab because I didn't put a scientist in there, that was dumb of me, yep, okay. Um, I need to put a scientist in there and then start adding data to the science lab, except everything I can transmit for full, um, for the full scientific, um, value. Then I'm just going to transmit that back because, well, you know, I want the science right now. we got to get the science. And we've got loads of science on here, so we're going to add some of it to the lab. I am making a few mistakes. There's a bunch of stuff I could have transmitted back, but instead added to the lab. But hey, it doesn't matter that much, because science in the lab is useful. A bunch of these reports I can't put in the lab. I guess maybe I can't put Ike reports in a lab around Duna. I don't really know. Anyway, last episode, a few of you noticed that after turning on all of the oxygen recyclers and the farm and things... Um, the Duna base is actually energy deficit, uh, has an energy deficit. It's running out of electric charge. So we've got to hightail it down there with the um, other crew, with the Ike crew. Um, we've got to load them up with so um, solar panels and we've got to attach them to the base because we do have extra solar panels down on Duna, but most of them are attached to the rover or the lander. So we can't really use them. And we brought a bunch of extra ones just for this kind of crazy occasion. Um, so if we look in here, We've got six um, solar panels, so we're going to grab, I think, four of them, take them down to the surface, and throw them on the Duna base, and hopefully that will work. Annoyingly, I can't actually put them in my inventory because they're too massive, um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of uh, keep attaching them to the ship until we get them to the lander um, like this. Uh, we're just going to drag them there, basically. Um, and we do that a bunch of times until we have them all attached, and then I put them kind of nicely on the side of the fuel tank so they look a little better and hopefully... Uh, well, just won't 
called weird drag issues. And yeah, now we're ready to head down to the surface. Now, annoyingly, I forgot to hit record, and we lost a bit of footage, just a bit, of us leaving the Concordia and going to the resource station, because we need some fuel for this. Um, so yeah, basically, I just went to the fueling station. You, there, there's an episode in Road to Colonization where I do that. You can go watch that if you're incredibly curious about how I do everything. But the bottom line is I got to the station, which is in a much higher orbit of Duna, which is a little annoying, um, but it kind of sort of, it's kind of hard to get things into a pinpoint orbit, especially when you're trying to save fuel. And this is running low on fuel, so it can't really reorientate itself because we need all of its fuel because it has basically two mission loads left in the... Uh, in its tanks. Anyway, so we're going to refuel with um, liquid fuel and oxidizer. We're going to get monopropellant in there and some life support. You'll notice we've only brought two Kerbals. We've brought an engineer and a pilot. It's because we don't need the scientist. We're uh, doing an engineering mission. We're going to attach new solar panels. Anyway, I just cut through most of the refueling because it's slow and it's just sliders sliding around. But yeah, and then we're going to do our deorbit and head down to Duna. So yeah, we did leave our scientist in the Concordia doing research where she is most useful, while the rest of the Kerbals head down to Duna. These Kerbals are pretty happy. They were like, oh, I didn't realize I was going to get to go to Duna, but they now, now they are, which is great. The scientist was pretty pissed off. She, um, yeah, she's not talking to us because we were like, oh, we're going to Duna. Do you want to come? Psych, you can't. Um, but yeah, we are annoyingly landing in the dark. Um, because I planned this poorly, but uh, it's, you know, you'll be able to see-ish, I guess. The dune is pretty red, it's fairly, you know, bright. Um, I should get an uh, ambient light mod or something like that. Um, I'm not sure if they've updated that, but I think there is Planet Shine, which does something similar. Um, but anyway, so we're just going to start pulling the drogue chutes because we want to land with as little fuel used as possible because we don't want to burn too much fuel and get stuck on Duna because these can only really just about leave Duna. Um, so yeah, we also pulled the main chutes so that we slow down as much as possible and we didn't have to burn much fuel at all to slow down, um, which is good. Uh, so yeah, we're going to come down a little bit to the west, which we don't want to do, so we're going to burn a little more, just throw ourselves over there a little bit. Um, we actually do um, re reposition the spacecraft when we land, but apparently I didn't put that footage in. Um, but yeah, I just jump over the other spacecraft a little bit. But yeah, pretty good landing, all is nice. And uh, yeah, here we are on Duna, at the base, not bad at all. And you can see after reorientating it, I get a nice shot of all of the spacecraft together, looking rather beautiful. Um, in the daytime after warping through day a bit and then I'm gonna get my uh, little Kerbal here doing his little jumping dance out to go and um, grab the rover drive over to the spacecraft to make transporting the solar panels a little easier because we can attach them to the um, to the rover anyway after pushing it out for ages because it wouldn't drive for some reason as we'll find out in a second um, after using his face to push it out uh, down on this ramp out of this garage I don't know why I brought a garage but or garage if you're American um, but yeah, and then after sitting on the uh, in the dirt, trying to figure out why it wouldn't move, after googling things and just being like, why isn't this rover driving? I figured out that the brakes were on, which was yeah not my proudest moment. I cut out about ten minutes of footage there of me just being like, why isn't this working? And then just the brakes were on. That was dumb. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, after all of that, we drive on over to the uh, scent vehicle. Well, to the Duna vehicle, the all-purpose Duna vehicle. I think that's what these are called. Yeah. All-purpose Duna vehicles, um, because they can go to Ike, they can go to Duna, they can just fly around like crazy. They can do anything. They're all-purpose. Yeah, so we drive over here. We can get the other engineer out. Um, I try and just drop one of the solar panels to the floor to make it easier. That wasn't a great idea. It sort of smashes and we lose one, which isn't great because the amount of money it costs to send a something like that to Duna. It's pretty, pretty high. I mean, it's it's not zero. So anyway, what I'm going to do is attach these to the lower part of the spacecraft. This will just make it easier for me to grab them and attach them to the rover. And I think three solar panels should be more than enough. And yeah, here, here they are all, all just nicely lined up so that I can attach them to the rover. Um, it looks like it's going to be underneath the rover there, but that's just a texture glitch. So I just rotate a little bit and attach it anyway. And you can see it... Oh, no, yep, yep, I'm having trouble. Yep, yep, attach. There we go. There we go. It's nicely attached. And then after doing a little bit more, we've got them all kind of attached there. So then it's just a matter of driving over to the Duna base and putting them on there. Because we can't let the Duna base run out of electric charge. That's how Kerbals die. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I'm going to do a sick J-turn because that's the first J-turn ever done on Duna. And it wasn't even really a J-turn. It was more of a just reverse. Whatever. Shut up. It was totally a J-turn. And then we're going to drive on over to the base. And 
put the solar panels on. I'm thinking I'm just going to kind of have them on each module so that they get evenly spaced and can get as much solar energy as possible because we need that solar energy. We need to not be running out of electric charge. Turns out farms and carbon extractors and water purifiers take up quite a lot of electric charge, especially while you're also researching stuff in your lab. I really should have thought of that. So yeah, we're going to throw this one on here. Um, another one of those solar panels also broke um, when I landed this base, the one on top of that module there. We get it extended. That's looking rather nice. And uh, yeah. And then after a bunch more of that laborious stuff, we have all of them attached. And now we actually are generating more electric charge than we're using. So the Duna base is not doomed, which is great. So anyway, the engineer's job done. He gets a ride back to his um, spacecraft and is getting ready to leave. Not super happy about it. He was like, why can't I stay? This is way cooler than Ike. The Ike's just a moon. We faked the Ike landings. It, was, it looks like the moon. We faked them with a moon landing. That is still my theory that all Ike landings are faked because Ike looks so much like the moon when you're on the surface. Anyway, enough of my crazy Kerbal conspiracies. Let's uh, get back into the spacecraft and get on our way. Um, yeah, so Valentina didn't even get to set foot on Duna. She's pretty pissed off at me. I probably should have just gotten her out for a second. And we take off with blistering speed, which is probably foolish because there is an atmosphere and we will be experiencing drag. Um, so yeah, we also did put the rover back somewhere safe away from the engine. Don't you worry. No Kerbal was uh, harmed during the filming of this video. That's probably not true. I imagine most Kerbals get harmed all the time. But anyway, yeah, so we get ourselves a nice encounter. We actually picked up some flames there. I think I did that far too aggressively. That wasn't four times time accelerate, by the way. It wasn't as aggressive as it looked. Um, but yeah, so we should have enough Delta V to get back to the spacecraft, but literally only just. Like, to the num like to the monopropellant unit, we only just get back. You can see we've burned down to about 50 something del meters per second of delta V, and our intercept speed is going to be a tiny bit higher than that, which is a bit of a shame. But no worries, we have um, monopropellant, which we can also burn. Um, so we should be able to just get back to the spacecraft, but then we'll have trouble taking this anywhere else, which is fine. This was the last designated mission for the Ike crew. They've been to Ike twice and Duna now. So yeah, but I would like to leave one of the landers on Duna, well at Duna, preferably on the station. But if they're not going to have enough fuel to get there, it's going to be a bit of a problem. So I'm going to have to figure that out when we come to it. Maybe I'll just use the Concordia to maneuver into the um, space station and leave them there. But if not, I could just leave one in orbit freely and we could come back to it. But uh, it wouldn't be quite as nice. But maybe if I take a better ascent path with the next Duna vehicle, it'll have enough fuel to get to the space station. Um, but anyway, yeah, I mean, who knows? So yeah, there we go. We're just gonna um, gonna just slowly maneuver in, get our get our encounter really close, try and burn off velocity while we do it. And yeah, it looks like I will have just enough fuel to slow down. If you're watching that delta v thing in the bottom right, you'll see how close this is. I have about 21 meters per second of delta v and about. 20 meters per second to burn off, so I should be able to slow down and then throw myself towards the Concordia and then use Mono Propellant to maneuver in. I did use Mono Propellant for a bunch of the kind of maneuvering just then, so I am pretty low, but I do have more than enough fuel to go and dock. Um, so yes, we burned out every tiny scrap of liquid fuel NOx dice that we had on the spacecraft, but we will be able to get to the Concordia with Mono Propellant, so that's rather nice, but yeah. Pretty successful mission. We fixed the Duna base. I mean, this has gone to Ike twice now. It's been a pretty successful Duna mission. It won't be coming back for a while, but this will be probably the last kind of long video on it. I haven't really done a ton of long videos on Duna in Road to Colonization. We looked at it a bit last time, but yeah. Um, so we're just going to go dock to this. I actually left the science module here. I forgot to mention that. I also did leave the science module. So the other lander will be a little heavier and fun fact has less delta V. So that'll be hugely worrying um, when we bring them back. But anyway, let's not think about that right now. That's a year away. And this is the end of the video. So if you'd like to go check out a couple more videos, there is my latest episode of Fall of Kerbin. Yes, it's back. It's World War II. We launch an aircraft carrier and get ready to be attacked in the city by Penguin. We do some stuff, we bomb some penguins and all of that. There's also my latest episode of Prison Architect where it's in 3D, what? Yeah, you should go watch that. There's like 3D settings and Prison Architect is crazy. Yeah, there's also links to my Twitter, Twitch and Patreon in the description if you're interested. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tate. I'll see you next time.